Today on What It's Like, we are back at Max Motive to take a closer look at this 1960 Pontiac Catalina convertible. But before getting into all of it, picture this. You just obtained a classic car that you know nothing about. Or perhaps it's a car that's off the beaten path that big channels simply don't cover. Perhaps you grew up with these cars and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars and cars that tend to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick, before we begin, we're going to have an end of the year episode. So if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns for me about any cars that have been reviewed on this channel so far, um, yeah, bit of a side note, we have done 175 cars for this channel so far, and we've only been going at it since September of 2021. So that that's nuts. But anyway, we're going to talk about some background, some, some inside information on that episode. It's going to be super cool. So if you guys can think of any questions that you'd like to ask me, I'll answer them for you right then and there. I'll put a poll up on what day you guys would like to see it, the 30th of December or the 31st, because everybody has plans on the 31st, so I, I don't want to cut into anybody's plans. Anyway, let's talk 1960 Pontiac model lineup, Catalina, Ventura, Star Chief, Bonneville, and let's not forget the wagons. Pontiac offered the Catalina from 1950 to 1981. It was a trim level from 1950 to 1958, first used on the 1950 Chieftain series. By 1959, Pontiac retired the Chieftain as well as the Super Chief models and replaced it with a junior model called the Catalina. Catalina was named after a island off the coast of California. 1960, Pontiac received a facelift featuring a horizontal grille as opposed to the 59 split grille. Round taillights, and to me, the body styles just w look way more sculpted than they did in 1959. Also, the V-fins were gone. Built on the GM B-body platform, along such cars as the Chevy Biscayne, Oldsmobile Super 88, Buick Invicta. Pontiac Catalina competed with the Dodge Dart slash Phoenix in the Mercury Monterey. 1960 Pontiac Catalina could be had as a two-door hardtop, four-door sports sedan, two-door sports sedan, four-door six-passenger wagon, four-door nine-passenger wagon, or the four-door Vista hardtop. Let's talk specs. 213.7 inches long, 80 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 122 inches. It weighs 4,020 pounds. Price was $3,078, which is equivalent to you spending $30,678.29 in the year 2022. Total 1960 Pontiac production was 396,716 units, of which total Catalina production was 210,934 units. And of that number, total Catalina convertibles was 17,172. Moving on to engines. Okay, so there's only one engine on offer, but could be had in two different flavors. 389 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.4 liters. It makes 215 horsepower in the basement form, 390 pound-feet of torque. When mated to the three-speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 10.6 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 112 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption is around 11.7 miles to the gallon. When mated to the four-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60, 12.3 seconds, with a theoretical top speed of 111 miles per hour, returning an average fuel economy rating of 11.1 .1 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the second flavor of 389 V8, 6.4 liters. It makes anywhere between 281 horsepower and 283 horsepower with 413 pound-feet of torque. When connected to the four-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 9.3 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 122 miles per hour while retaining an average fuel economy rating of 10 miles to the gallon. When coupled to the three-speed manual, zero to 60 improves almost by a whole second. Zero to 60, 8.6 seconds. 122 theoretical top speed, 11.3 miles to the gallon. Real quick but important side note. So if you buy one of these cars and it's totally original, just be aware that they used the nylon timing gear. And what ended up happening was, and the reason they used it was it quieted things down in the uh, top end. Like as far as like, there wasn't as much chain noise or anything like that. 
made it quieter. So what ended up happening was, was nylon um, started deteriorating as time went on and it would get into the oil galleys and it would make it so that the oil couldn't pass through the galleys. Eventually the engine would just cease. Like there's articles where people are just driving their car and it just totally just locks up on them. So I just wanted to make that aware to you. If you're looking at uh, getting one of these cars, just be aware that if it's a totally numbers matching original car, Odds are it has a nylon timing gear. Get that changed ASAP. So let's talk styling, starting with the front. This car has a lot going on that just simply doesn't show up in photos. It's very sculpted car, this is. So just notice the hood, how it comes down to a point here. And notice... very angular it's very spear and just notice the lines around it. it makes it look like a teardrop elongated teardrop just look at all of everything that's going on here notice this line here protrudes outward comes to a point here as well as the bumper has a point in the center as well just notice the grill it's all textured and it, every single row does not come out the same exact spot. Taking a walk down the side, there's a bunch of different lines, a bunch of different elements going on. This kind of bubbles out and then it pushes, it tucks back in over here. And it's like that the whole way down right here juts inside here for the door and then it picks up here it comes out but just notice how many lines are in this rear design You've got this line that comes up over top of the rear fender so just check out this line it starts right here comes out the back then you have the continuation of this plus this lots of stuff going on with this design of this car and all of the different angles back here just check out the taillight situation I'm gonna take a step back so you can see gas filler cap is here it opens up like that Look how cool that is Just notice how this is all. Look at these reverse lights. Those are cool. And the rear lights. Double humps. Almost like a figure eight if you look at it this way. This is a convertible. Notice it has a plexiglass rear window. Coming up and getting inside, the door has nice heft to it, but it's not overly heavy. Here's what the door panel looks like. It's got a nice vinyl material as well as carpet at the bottom. And notice it's two-toned. The carpet in this part here is about the same color and it's a lighter blue up here. This is the armrest as well as the door handle to pull the door shut door handle to get out this is for the vent window and look at how that operates also notice it's tinted the window crank for the big window notice it is also tinted it's also framed in and that's what that looks like here's my finger for reference of how thick this frame is around the window coming down inside the pedal box down here so here's the brake release. This is the brake. This is a vent that is located just behind the brake. A high beam switch is right behind it. Brake, gas pedal. But just take a look at this interior. It's really nice. All right, getting inside. So I've never had an issue with these. 
a lot of people say this dog leg or underneath this windshield where the wraparound windshield connects onto that people hit their leg their knee off of this but to hit your knee off of this you'd have to like you'd have to really get your knee up there this is how I get in I put my leg in here first and just kind of pivot it in like this and then just slide in so that's what the door sounds like when it closes it's a nice it's a nice quality shut. Just check out these eight pillars. Look at how they swivel back. That's cool. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Let's take a minute and talk about this steering wheel. I absolutely love this steering wheel. I don't know if this was called translucent, translucid steering wheel. Chrysler had a steering wheel that lit up at night that was similar to this. It actually didn't light up, it glowed. It was like in the 60s. Just like same thing with this model. Notice it's a nice two spoke wheel with a nice horn ring. You push this to beep the horn. This is what under the steering wheel is like. This steering wheel does not have tilt wheel feature. So it isn't in my crotch. And I wear size 34 pants. So if you're a little bit bigger than that, it might be kind of snug. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the top left hand side and moving right, left turn signal indicator, speedometer, right turn signal indicator. Then there are four pods. In the first pod is the fuel gauge. In the second pod, it actually houses two sets of idiot lights. The temperature is on the bottom with cold and hot. Oil pressure is at the top. Odometer in the center of the other two pods. Amp gauge is in the third pod. The fourth pod would be the clock, but they selected not to get the clock. Drive select modes read park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Headlights, wipers, push to center for the wash feature. Heater slash defrost controls as well as blower motor settings. Ignition, lighter, radio, ashtray for the driver, ashtray for the passenger. This is what I look like sitting in the seat. I'm six foot two, size 34 pants. Lots of headroom. Actually, don't feel claustrophobic whatsoever in this car, and this car doesn't feel that big either. Up above, we have sun visors. So just check that out. Here's my hand for reference. These are pretty big. They're also pretty long. So look at how long they are. I'm gonna put the other one down. So that's what it looks like. You can still see the rearview mirror. It is a little bit covered up, but that's cool. That's good cover. For if you're driving and it's very sunny this is a convertible so to unlock the convertible top we're not going to put the convertible top down but you'd unlock it here and you'd unlock it over there and then you'd push this button it's a power top car has to be on of course and you just it would put the top down for you here's what the rear view mirror looks like it's daytime nighttime has a daytime nighttime feature, which is it's switch in the back. So that's nighttime, that's daytime, or you can set it up vice versa. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. This is the camera that we use for all of the cinematic shots. It's a pretty big camera. We're gonna put it in the glove box. Glove box is right here. It's kind of sort of in the center. Just check out how big and massive that glove box is. It's really long too. And notice it has indentations for cup holders. Four cup holders. Oh man. So it fits, but it's a bit tall. So it's not going to shut. The hot shoe is getting caught on the top of the glove box part. I don't want to get it stuck in there. So it, it fits in there, but it doesn't shut. So it's kind of sort of... Eh, it will, but it doesn't shut. So you can call it however you want to call it. It does fit, but it doesn't shut. So it's sort of, it will fit if you want it to fit. And if we took it apart, it could fit, but we're not going to take it apart. Getting into the back seat. So you just push the seat forward like that. That's all the further it goes, but it pivots ever so slightly out of the way. That is how much space you have to get back. Sitting in the back of the 1960 Pontiac. 
I got lots of headroom. I'm actually gonna have to sit up a little higher because I don't have any knee room. So sitting up higher, I don't have nearly as much headroom, but guess what? This is a convertible, so you could have the sky's the limit, right? So this is the convertible top cover. Check out the seat profile against something that is solid and straight. It is very upright. The bottom of the seat cushion actually tucks down inside here. There isn't any room for me to put my fingers in between my knee and the seat. There are no coat hooks because this is a convertible, but just notice all of the workings of the convertible top and see all the ribs. Windows do go down. There is a nice armrest. There is not a center armrest. And I've heard different things. The rear speaker housing, or it's just a decorative piece. Just check out all of the space that you have back there. Extra storage space when the convertible tops up. If the convertible tops down, that's where the convertible top goes. Notice the light there. That's really cool. It's on the convertible top itself, but it's that's very interesting. Here's what the back to front view looks like. Here is what out the rear window looks like and behind the rear seat. Here's how the window operates. Look at how cool that is. That's so cool. Coming back to the trunk region back here, I put the key in. Let's check out this trunk compartment. It's absolutely huge. Full size spare. And check out this jack. It's a scissor jack, but it's, it's a pump scissor jack. Very interesting. 1960 shop manual comes with this car so this will tell you everything that you need to know about this car and how to fix it which is very useful information shows you different exploded diagrams of different things Look at that. Just check out how this deck lid is designed. It's not straight. It actually curves down here. Very interesting. Also check out the chrome pieces on here. Coming up to the under the hood section, so getting under the hood of this car, the hood release is right here. It's just this little black thing that kind of sort of blends in with everything else. But you just move it to the right. It's pretty heavy. And I don't think this has a secondary catch, so you have to hold this while you pick up on the hood. That's wrong, it has a secondary catch. So you pull this one, it goes all the way to the right, and then the secondary catch is right here. See it move? It's kind of like a J hook. And the hood's pretty heavy. Just check out the design of that engine. I love the way Pontiac engines look. They look different than any other engine from any other engine family. Notice the generator is on the left-hand side as opposed to the right-hand side where it generally is. And notice how far away it is from everything. This one's got power brakes, single master cylinder. Check out how small the master cylinder is, it's tiny. Power steering, nice big battery with a battery disconnect, which is always a great idea if you have a classic car. 
on to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 Years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positives, great styling, especially the 59s. Fine performance, surprisingly good handling. Big, smooth, and impressive. Still available and quite affordable. Against it, too big to make practical daily drivers, question mark. Hard top, sedans, less demand than two doors. Needs plenty of high octane to drive. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the name of the band and song title, both correctly, will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. I had to make that one a little bit easier. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. All of that information will be in the link in the description. So if I catch you on here or on Facebook, just know that I appreciate everything. And until next time, toodaloo!